Are we finally doing this? Are we riding the Mugen train? I have a feeling a lot of these side characters are not going to be so side character by the end of this. Everyone wearing their lives, lives on their faces. I remember my first train ride. <laughs> right, they haven't met him. They didn't see his glorious prologue. I, how could you not recognize him? <laughs> Red tipped, long blonde hair, sword. Yeah, I think you will. That's him. <laughs> you found him. The force behind his love for food. <laughs> he just keeps going. <laughs> Every bite, huh? Not complaining. It does look umai. How can we how can we really be sure it's him? <laughs> See, I thought he was being generous and buying this bento for other people, but Oh! Oh that's right, new opening. Damn, what an intro. Hell yeah, this is exactly what I was hoping it would be. Yeah, this is looking good. This is looking good. I'm loving this pairing already. Son. <laughs> oh my god, that's so morbid. He's like just smiling over the corpses of his underlings. This low-ranking people he sent to sent off to their certain deaths. But why did they die? We'll never know. What went wrong? Tanjiro looking looking fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that's Rengoku. We've heard about his father. It's gonna be a thing. Zenitsu's gonna do some epic stuff. Kawaii Demon is gonna occasionally come out of her box to save the day. <laughs> I'm so excited for more Rengoku. Some epic fights come in. I I'm like, I'm really pumped for this arc. I can just feel it. You know what you can just tell by looking at the opening of things? Or looking at the first episode? You can just feel there's something bigger coming. Episode 2, Deep Sleep! <laughs> yeah. Yes. Indeed. I'm gonna try this just in my life as I eat. Umai. Umai. Maybe it'll enhance my appreciation of food. Well, he's not random. He looks beautiful. Oh, already? We're already going to this dark place? I thought we were gonna have a little greeting and... Okay. I'm this... Uh, your future pupil that you love and will also love you. Yeah, he's... Come around, that's a relief. We don't need to waste time on that. We were sent to our deaths by the crow. Alright, we're getting into this. Yeah, we got some similar history or backstory or something. <laughs> Spit it out! <laughs> okay, thanks for the help. Okay. Yes. Yes. He's staring off into a bright and beautiful future that only he can see. No one else can see it except for me. I see it. You know what's partly so exciting about this? Is that I feel like he feels an emotional void that's been in the show for a little while. Because Tanjiro lost everything, lost his family, and became the head of his own life. If that makes sense, like taking care of his sister and not really having anyone to lean on. I mean, he's had influences for sure, but there is nobody really that I felt has been in a older brother or parental role or anything like that. He's sort of been at the top of his own hierarchy of life, but he's a kid, you know, this is anime, so he's 11 and he's more mature than most people will ever be in their entire lives. But no matter how strong you are, there's just something beautiful about having someone to lean on. And Rengoku being as solid as he seems to be, he just invites you to lean on him in that way. And it's probably going to apply mainly to Tanjiro, but I can imagine it applying to Zenitsu and Inosuke as well. Honestly, I feel like some of the greatest growth periods of my life or some of the things I attribute a lot of my growth to has been meeting people who I admired. People in my life who were sort of ahead of me in key ways, interactions with whom were sort of like them tossing me a, a rope or creating some kind of vacuum tube to get sucked up to a higher level that I probably could have gotten to on my own but would have taken me a lot longer and, you know, maybe never gotten to at all. Interacting with people who are great and also for that matter with people who are not so great has a certain gravity of its own that kind of pulls you in an average, I think. And I think it's at the strongest not when it's just some sort of objective admiration but when there's a relationship, you know, when there's love there. So I can already just feel the magnetism. <laughs> And Tanjiro seems to be both. Only the Avatar can unite the five elements and bring balance to the world. Interesting, here we get some lore. I need some time to analyze this. Love comes from fire, that's really cool. And actually fits perfectly with Tanjiro and Rengoku. Stone just sort of lonely there without any offshoots. This is really cool, it's looking like an RPG job chart. <laughs> yes, another person joining my club of people who realize that beauty is not a name. Oh, alright. Tanjiro can be the first. Well, that sort of fits, right? Because he's got multiple skills. He can be versatile. 
look of peaceful resolve. <laughs> the sense of justice. Man, bottle that and sell it. I'd buy it. You go do that. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> or a telephone pole. Why do you think we're here? At least Zenitsu can't be left behind this time, right? We're letting this tiny train. <laughs> He'll be around for the action. As they do <laughs> in this... Demon corpse is probably just in the manual. So you just send off grunts and they just disappear. That's when you send in the mid-range people, then they disappear. Finally, you send in the Hashira. Everyone's so damn shady on this train. <laughs> Some very dramatic hole punching. More dramatic hole punching. What do you smell, Tanjiro? What do you smell? This guy's like, got eye bags like me. It's starting? Everyone in this train's like, oh my! <laughs> he just feels so alive in everything he does. He just exudes power. I love it. You guys can take your seats. This won't be long. How do they do these things? They look so beautiful. Oh my god! <laughs> Man, Tanjiro's water effects are cool, but there's something extra special about Rengoku and his fire. And the body exploded. Usually they like linger around to monologue for a bit and flashback. That's like a passive skill. Skip monologue. What in the world? <laughs> oh, that's why they look so shady. They're like literally ghosts. Are we headed anywhere in particular? <laughs> I know it's not, not important, but... Just, just stop whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> That's sort of great, I kind of love that. Rengoku's here, but in this case, still doing his thing. Yeah, I think the demons have leveled up with the season a little bit. He fits so perfectly in My Hero Academia. I know I keep talking about it. He's like the ultimate hero, honestly, in their terms. Puts people first, does it with a smile on his face. Is extra powerful. No wasted space, internally. Knows his attacks. Oh. <laughs> And body goes boom, body explodes. Gonna dramatically fall a little bit first. This is. Yeah, this is where we could go. This is where we could be. <laughs> yeah. Is he gonna accept the other two? There you go. This guy's extra room in his heart. Literally getting pulled into his orbit. Even Inosuke, that's something about that that's really high praise. Inosuke's not one to like fall in line. I guess for Goku's just impossible to ignore. But those are just the grunts. These are like the intro demons. There's an arch demon coming. That's cute. And they're cuddling. <laughs> All right, they got close pretty quick. Dream. I get the sense there are more demons on this train than human passengers. I wonder if there's a goal here or if they're not just sort of jerks riding a train. <laughs> like, why the Mugen train? Where are we going? Is it relevant? Probably not. Are these kid hostages? Oh, did he put them to sleep? Or the conductor? Huh, that's interesting incentive. Sort of putting them into some kind of dream matrix. Tanjiro, what will he dream of? Family? Family, yeah. Oh man, remember those days? Not only did I sell the charcoal, but I fixed the whole village. Literally tying people's shoelaces. I feel like it's connected, the fact that he's dreaming of family. I mean, it's no big surprise he would do that if this is like some kind of sweet dream thing. But just in terms of the episode and Thundra's character, there is something about him that I feel never fully processed what happened or he channeled all that energy into Nezuko. And that's always been there. But now that he's with Rengoku, who is going to be sort of an older brother figure or even a parental figure, I can imagine a lot of that coming up again. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like this is a look into his, his psyche in a way we don't see externally. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's in there. Oh, actually it's him. <laughs> I 
gotta... Classic villain talk. I would love to see all their dreams, if possible. Inuzuki probably dreams of, like, chasing rabbits. Rengoku dreams of Umai. Zenitsu probably dreams of ladies. That's his psyche talking to him. He probably is exhausted in a way he, like, can't admit to himself. Uh, yeah, this is one of those dreams where it's beautiful and terrible at the same time. You know what I mean? For me, the worst dreams by far, or the ones that shake me the most, are not the nightmares. You know, not the ones where terrible things happen. Those are actually great because I wake up feeling relieved. It's the dreams of treasured things once lost that haunt me the most upon waking. I mean, even in waking life, you know, I have moments like that. Some of the most bitter pain is uh, falling into those moments or daydreams when... You're still in a moment, a beautiful moment. And it's the sweetest feeling for a moment and then reality sort of creeps back in and then you realize it's gone. Though I feel there's a positive thing in there, which is the lesson that even the greatest of things are often transitory. I guess all things are transitory. And so as I've gotten older, I find myself in those great moments when they're actually happening in real life to like really, really sort of breathe deep and focus on it and imagine it and try to create a snapshot of it in my mind. And try to really be fully present in those moments. And it ends up being especially poignant and you, know, you can't take it with you really, but at least for those short moments, you're really living, you're really alive. The dream is obviously seductive for Tanjiro, but while there's a danger there, in a weird way, I feel like actually it'll ultimately be good for him. Well, that's it. And new ending. <laughs> I love the Rengoku focus. They're walking along the track. Yeah, legacy, right? Legacy, family, broship. This is a different kind of training. It's also a really cool way to get to explore the characters a little bit. You know, it's a plot explained way of going into their psyches. There's gotta be a lot of great stuff in there. A little lightheartedness. <laughs> when I first heard of a train arc, I was thinking like, wouldn't that be a little bit stifling? You know what I mean? We're just in the same environment. But actually, I think maybe the answer is to get more emotional, to go more inward, more character driven stuff, which it seems like it's doing. And a fun fact. <laughs> Or, or this, a skit. Oh, it is a good. <laughs> good, we're still doing this. I don't know what that is. Do I have Tsugoku? Should have been. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're getting deeper into it. Alright, well, I learned nothing from that fact. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but I'm sure that Rengoku doesn't need it. So gotta say, pretty excellent episode, even if a lot of it is building up. Like, this episode basically had it all, or is revealing that all is coming. It's sort of a quiet, kind of melancholy journey into themselves as they sleep, or at least for Tanjiro. But then just a feeling of warmth brewing between Master Pupil. The very exciting prospect of Tanjiro kind of revisiting some of this stuff emotionally, or getting some kind of internal growth as opposed to just skill building, which will certainly also be there. But then, you know, it's not just that. We got this amazing action sequence with Rengoku, basically just proving again and again that he's just ultimate awesome badass. So yeah, my excitement for this arc just increases with every passing episode.